This is an introduction to the physiology of bone remodeling. Bones are not an inert static material. Rather, they are highly organized living tissue. Two types of osseous tissues are found in all bones. Cortical bone, found in the shafts of long bones and made of overlapping cylindrical units termed reversion systems. And cancellous bone, sometimes also referred to as spongy bone, found at the ends of long bones, in flat bones such as the hip, and in vertebral bodies and composed of a meshwork of trabeculae. Bone is composed of cells and extracellular matrix, or ECM. The two types of cells in bones are osteoclasts, which are the only cells that break bone down in a process called bone resorption, and osteoblasts, which are bone-building cells. The extracellular matrix is subdivided into organic and inorganic parts. The organic matrix is mainly constituted of type 1 collagen, proteins, and proteoglycans. The inorganic matrix contains calcium and phosphorus deposited into the collagenous matrix. This interdigitated organization confers rigidity and strength while maintaining elasticity. In order to maintain strength, bone resorption and formation are coupled, restoring damages and ensuring mechanical integrity, as well as regulating the release of calcium and phosphorus, which plays a central role in the metabolic needs of the body. Bone remodeling involves four main processes, activation, resorption, formation, and resting. The quiescent bone surface is covered with bone lining cells. Osteoclasts, derived from hematopoietic precursor cells in the granulocyte macrophage lineage, are the only cells capable of breaking down mineralized bone, and they require two hits for activation. MCSF is required to induce clonal expansion of the number of macrophages. Secondly, the precursors display RANK, or receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B. Marrow stromal cells and osteoblasts can activate the precursor cell to differentiate by binding its RANK ligand, noted here as RANK L. Release of RANK L, and thus the process of osteoclastogenesis, is stimulated by vitamin D, parathyroid hormone, interleukin-1, and prostaglandins. Under the influence of factors such as estrogen, stromal cells secrete a decoy receptor for rank ligand called osteoprotedrin, or OPG, which will prevent differentiation to mature osteoclasts. You should now be able to understand how the loss of estrogen in a menopausal woman will lead to an increase in bone resorption and subsequently osteoporosis. All of these stimulating and suppressing factors that I've previously mentioned and have drawn here have clear clinical relevance in our patients' disease formation and treatment, including with chronic kidney disease, hyperparathyroidism, gastrointestinal malabsorption, osteoporosis, and Paget's disease. The activated osteoclasts fuse to form mature, bone-resorbing cells and are recruited to the activated surface. The osteoclasts attach tightly to the matrix, creating an isolated lacunae called Hauschip's lacunae which creates an acidic environment that dissolves the inorganic matrix called bone resorption. This step occurs because cathepsin K, a protease enzyme secreted by the osteoclast into the acidic resorptive pit and a potential future target of osteoporosis therapy, catabolizes bone. The resorption phase takes about three to four weeks to complete. Because calcium and phosphorus are released into the blood from the matrix, I always remember that osteoclasts create calcium. Osteoclasts then disappear from the resorption pits. A multipotent mesenchymal stem cell undergoes differentiation to give rise to bone-building osteoblasts, which synthesize the healthy new organic matrix, including collagen type 1 and alkaline phosphatase. Clinically, we are occasionally confronted with an elevated alkaline phosphatase level, which is a clue that we need to pursue potential cholestatic disease or increase bone turnover. This formation step requires an adequate amount of calcium and phosphorus and takes three to four months to complete, much longer than resorption. This new bone surface remains dormant until the next cycle begins again. As they synthesize bone, the osteoblasts become trapped in the matrix and form mechanoreceptors called osteocytes. These osteocytes are connected in a framework and in response to damage or stress, release substances which influence bone remodeling. One such substance called sclerostin, which inhibits osteoblastic bone formation, is a potential target for osteoporosis therapy. The overall impact that osteocytes have on bone turnover leads to repair of microscopic damage, ensuring maintenance of new, healthy, 
and strong bone.